What's up guys, Kyle with Laser Everything and today we're looking at the Pergear Laser Storm L5. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so like I said, we're taking a look at the Pergear Laser Storm L5. Now, this is a rather entry level laser and that's okay because everyone starts somewhere. It's a diode laser, so it's working around the 455 wavelength. Um, it's using an atom stack diode laser, outputting about 5 watts, and it's easy enough to build. The instruction booklet looks like someone cared. Um, that said, it is missing a few steps, but if you can put together IKEA furniture, I think you'll be okay. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but it is worth noting. It comes with all the tools you need, the instruction booklet, and safety glasses and spacer for focusing. So that's a nice start to have safety glasses. Um, that said, maybe get an extra pair or two. You only have one set of eyes. Like a typical new owner of a diode laser, I did test grids on materials that I had laying around and spares of. And right away was past the tiptoe stages and off to running. As you can see here, uh, it doesn't take long to get usable settings. Likely not the most optimal settings, but I'm happy with it for day one. Let's go ahead and get our artwork prepped. Now we're going to be using this Bitcoin artwork we found online. And after we get it sized to where we want, so it fits on the piece we're engraving, we're going to go ahead and make a circle to use as an outline for the diode laser so we can put it at a fraction of a percent so it's only just barely lighting the diode so we can get that item aligned perfectly. By setting only the line to output it'll allow us to get everything aligned without starting the actual engrave. Make sure you set the power on the outline to a fraction of a percent so that it only triggers the diode enough to turn it on without engraving anything. And again, be sure to wear your safety glasses. Check out this time lapse. It's always fun watching the progress of a laser doing its thing. That said, always wear eye protection and don't get Walder's eye from looking at the bright spot. Webcams are your friend. Now being an entry level laser, the price lines up with that having an MSRP of $299 US, and at the time of filming is actually on sale for $269.99, so not a bad value. Max recommended engrave speed is 3000 millimeters a minute in the manual. The settings I'm using here are 2250 millimeters a minute at 15% power. It has a work area size of 410 by 400 millimeters, and claims an accuracy to 0 0.01 millimeters. Being that this is a G-code style laser, you have the options to use laser gerbil or light burn. I'm a light burn kind of guy when given the choice, so I opted to use that while testing. It feels okay to work with being primarily aluminum extrusion and aluminum parts. Though the height adjustment's a bit fiddly with two screws to adjust, it would be nice to see a single thumb screw for ease in the future or on other models. Other equipment that you'll need outside the box when you order this is going to be an exhaust fan. It's not great to breathe in soot and smoke, so get that stuff out of the house in the workspace. Consider buying an enclosure if you have a lot of people walking around or kids running around and you don't have a dedicated workspace. Or I just use the bed of my CO2 laser which I can enclose, which already conveniently had an exhaust fan. If you need any recommendations on exhaust fans or other equipment and accessories, be sure to check out the buying guide and the link in the video description. It's all hardware that we've tested and curated over time, and either myself, Alex, or the other staff use often or daily. By way of materials, diodes are often called the little brother or baby CO2, and that's because more or less they're often targeting the same materials. Usually wood, cork, paper are the most common, and they can also be used for leather, even acrylic, or fabric when you're light with it. 
That said, diodes are great for fine detail, and you can really fine tune it in on gentle engraves, whereas comparatively, my 100 watt CO2 when trying to go light on a material might not be light enough. A safety point to consider, a CO2 laser uses air assist to suppress flare-ups or ignitions on material. You don't have that on most diodes, so you really need to be more attent on that if you have something that might ignite under the laser. Have a way to kill power and put out the potential flames if needed. Now this is an entry level machine. There's no limit switches, there's no e-stop, there's no fancy screens. You're running this straight off your computer live, and that said, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It is a workhorse, it is working, we did make this and you can make some cool stuff. Now for those in the market for a diode, I think it's a solid laser. Whether you're starting out, or if you're like a few other people I know who run a few of them at a time to knock out various things at once, um, I think it'll be okay. What other equipment would you like us to review or take a look at, unbox, anything specific? What type of projects would you be interested in seeing? We'd love to hear from you, leave a comment below. Don't forget to smash that like button, check us out on Discord and Facebook, and if you have any questions, you can reach out to us or any of the community there, and we can help out. If you like the content and want to support what you see, join the LMA, uh, where you're directly supporting the creation of our content, uh, exclusive streams, bonus podcasts, and more. All links will be available in the video description. Happy lasering. Have a good one, guys. See you in the next one.